Alrighty, you guys asked for it. We're making it happen. We're gonna run way out deep since this time of year is usually very dirty near shore where we usually dive and we gotta find clear water to spearfish. So that's the game plan. It's not as clear or fishy as prime time summer, but we're gonna make the best of it, see what we can do. Shoot something. Really, if we can find anything to spearfish today, then I'll be happy. Did make for a cool video. We gotta run way offshore to a cluster of rigs. I've actually never brought the pong out to. It's also farther than I've ever been offshore, so it should be interesting. Today, the focus is on rig spear fishing. We are not gonna be trying for Wahoo since the water was so dirty last video. Anyways, we got the spear guns on the rack. Fixed that up last night. Got ice in the coolers. Got the dudes in the boat. We're ready to rock. We're a little bit late. I had to go a little bit farther today to get ready, but rig diving today, offshore oil rigs. You guys stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. this and a bow shark came right up immediately. Nice mangrove snapper. Good fish. Nice mangrove for February. Oh, dude, for real. Considering I didn't really expect to see many, or really any. It was a good sized shark. I don't know, it's hard to put a, a number on a fish when something happens that fast. There you go, that's as big as a summertime mangrove snapper. 
and we got it in February. Definitely awesome to get one of these this time of year. Good fish in the box. Quick cut here just to give you guys some context. My GoPro mic actually glitched out whenever I was filming and talking about it offshore. But believe it or not, whenever we got to this rig, one of the rig workers up top actually hollered at us and he said every single day they were seeing a bull shark come up and just kind of cruise around the rig. And that one of the days that they were fishing, uh, they caught a ling or a cobia and whenever it was thrashing at the surface, this bull shark or a bull shark just came up and chopped it in half. After hearing that, I was like, okay, we just won't shoot anything too big that's gonna thrash around or cause a bunch of commotion. But no, all it took was that mangrove snapper thrashing around for just a few seconds, as you guys saw, to get that shark's attention and have it come up out of that murk. So as I said in the intro, this time of year, the rigs are usually pretty barren, but some fish that we always see offshore at these deeper rigs are these barracudas. You can see in this video, they're just everywhere. We call them the wolf pack because they just creep up behind you and they're always in a pack of four or five or even more. We also tend to see a lot of Jack Cavell this time of year, as well as horse eye jacks. But if you get lucky, you'll find schools of these. This is a yellow jack, and unlike the Jack Carvel, these are known to be great to eat. They kind of look like a cross between a pompano and a Jack Carvel. I was actually surprised at how powerful this fish was, but I guess that goes with the name Jack. Uh, those Jack Carvels, much like these Yellow Jacks, got pound for pound quite a fight. Got the wolf pack on my tail. But all right. From what I know, that right there is a really good eating fish. But man, I'll tell you what, that is a surprisingly strong fish. I was not expecting a fight like that. Check out the colors on that fish. Awesome.
just said bull shark. What are they doing? <laughs> he says they're right under him. Fisher is swimming away from the boat. Where is he now? Oh, oh I see him there. There he is. Put it underwater. Well, I guess after shooting two yellow jacks on a rig and having them thrash around everywhere, that's enough to bring in the bull sharks. My dude, he's right under the boat. <laughs> Oh, bull shark diving. Holy sheesh! <laughs> that was so cool. That was awesome. Get out of the water. He just... I don't think I've ever jumped in the boat faster. That was awesome though. So as it turns out, these bull sharks actually move out deeper offshore in the winter months here in the Gulf of Mexico. Where do they go? The deep oil rigs. Exactly where we're diving. Just check out how many of these things swim up. It was cool until that shark swooped by you and then turned on me. And it started coming at me and I'm sitting here with a camera in my hand, if nothing else. If was just one, it wouldn't be a big deal, but since there's so many, like, you have to keep up with all of them, otherwise yeah. one will be like right behind you. So I've noticed on these rigs with these platforms down about 30, 40 feet, I tend to see a lot of rock kind grouper. And this particular spot, I saw a giant, or at least bigger than anything I've ever speared. And I just could not catch up to it. Every time I'd see it and try to make a <laughs> shot, he'd dart. And after about two or three times, I just gave up. But here I also found a dog snapper. Took kind of a Hail Mary shot there, but I only had a one banded gun and I think my aim was a bit off, but still super cool to see. I haven't seen a whole lot of dog snapper here in Texas and uh, they taste really good. So I tried for it, unfortunately we missed. But here I had actually spotted two lionfish. Fish I've actually only seen here in Texas on this set of rigs. And luckily, I was able to get one shot because of you guys 
or a lot of you may know, these are actually invasive on the coral reefs and you're actually supposed to shoot them. I hear they taste pretty good too, so at the end of this video, along with those yellow jacks, we're going to do a catch and cook with this lionfish and see how it tastes. Super cool, but you actually have to be very careful with these things. Those spines are super venomous, and you don't want to get stuck by one, especially when you're 60 miles offshore. So I made sure to brain it, and I was very careful in handling it to show it to the camera, but very cool fish, and it almost has like a tiger stripe pattern to it. Suit off, and I feel a lot better, so much better. Got dry and warmed up. Started to get chilly there at the end of the day. My watch was saying 64 degrees was the water temp, so a little bit nippy. But uh, yeah, we got a, quite the mixed bag here. Lionfish, we have a mystery grouper that I actually saw one of when I was diving. Rock hind grouper, yellow jacks. We're gonna do quite the catch and cook once we get back. So if you guys wanna see us clean up these fish and do a taste test, Stay tuned, and I'll see you guys at the clean table. Dude, that's a thick fillet. The meat looks like pompano meat, super light. What's up? We are back. I'm gonna try to make this pretty quick because all we're really doing in this segment is trying our lionfish and our yellow jack. As I said, I've never had it before. Um, what I'm gonna do first, I guess, is actually make sure that this works. If you guys are wondering why we are out here on a propane stove, it's because I've been wanting to do like catching cooks off the ponga, like maybe on the boat while we're offshore or um, just like pulling up to an island or the beach in the boat pulling the fillets out and then pulling out a propane burner and cooking it on the spot while we're out or coming back from fishing. So let me know what you guys think. If y'all wanna see catching cooks on the propane burners, on the boat or next to the boat, like on an island, stuff like that. Just to kind of change it up, uh, make things interesting. I'm thinking kind of like that island survival catching cook kind of style. What I like to do with these fish is get a paper towel, pat them dry. I really don't like slimy wet fish, especially when you're gonna go to freeze them. It's ideal to use um, a vacuum sealer or saran wrap. Since I knew I was gonna eat these fairly soon, I just did the Ziploc. I'm probably gonna leave the skin on just so it doesn't flake into a bunch of pieces. Let me know if you guys have ever tried lionfish or yellow jack before. I'm sure if any of y'all dive in Florida and you've had one of these. Us Texas boys don't get to see a whole lot either, so. As I said, the meat looks really good. I don't know if I talked about the lionfish meat, but also looks super white. So for these fish, I'm gonna keep it basic as I usually do in my catch and cook videos, if you guys are familiar with those. Um, a lot of these offshore species of fish don't really need a whole lot to be done to them, really. If you really want to keep it simple, butter, maybe some olive oil and some salt and pepper, and honestly, that's good. I'm gonna take it one step further today and do some garlic salt. Um, but since we are tasting this fish. I don't want to put on too many seasonings or whatnot, just so we get that flavor going. All right, we're trying to kick this burner on. You know what? I forgot a lighter. Classic. I think she's good. All right, she is going. We're gonna do the line fish first with a very light seasoning of garlic salt. I'm gonna leave the skin on just so the meat doesn't fall apart into a billion pieces. Let's do it. All right. There we go. I'm gonna put it face down. I guess that's really hot. That got hot quick. Look at it just soaking in that olive oil. All right, so I'm just gonna eyeball this. Whenever it starts to flake and get white, then we are gonna pull it off and try it out. Oh yeah. See how it's starting to break and flake? The only reason it's sticking together is because of that skin on there. Looks kind of like a small mangrove snapper fillet. It really rose too. We're gonna have a really nice hunk of meat. I think this lionfish is about done. Let's kill the heat and give it a try. Here we go. We're gonna start small. Just 
Tastes like fish. Good fish. Yeah. Everyone was right. <laughs> That's really good. The only thing about line fish though is I feel like you gotta shoot a bunch to get a decent amount of meat. This one did have a big fillet, but it was a little bit tricky to clean them getting around all the spines. Probably should have skinned it. That skin is just breaking apart and getting everywhere. It's like flaking. Pretty impressed, that's some good stuff. <coughs> Damn, I just inhaled <laughs> it. <coughs> Taste is great, texture is great. The only downers I would give is that there's just not a whole lot to eat on there. And be very careful handling it in the boat. You gotta snip the spines, and then even when you're cleaning it, I notice there's like little spikes on the fish. I'm not sure if those are venomous as well, but I was very careful about those too. Um, so it is a big hassle to clean and eat them. I see people on YouTube just poke a hole in them and not actually stick them with the flopper. Um, so I understand why a lot of guys I see on YouTube just poke them and let them swim off and die. Uh, but you know, as far as flavor and eating, it was good. All right, Yellow Jack, we're just gonna cook a small piece right now. All right, first time ever eating Yellow Jack. Let's see it. Mm. It is still super hot. I feel like I say this every time, but that's amazing. Super good. To get a fish of that size, it tastes this good. Oh, I didn't let that cool off. They're super easy to clean. They have that real soft uh, skin. And to taste like that, that's 100% worth it. A lot easier to clean than a snapper, too.